It goes on to say in James chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, draw nigh to God and he will. That's a surety. When you draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. When you feel that you're dry, you're lacking, there's something that is missing, you draw close to him. How do you draw close to him? In prayer, in worship, in praise, in reading his word, in filling yourself with good things and filling your thoughts with good thoughts. You draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be torn, turned into mourning and your joy into heaviness. God saying, let my laughter be turned into mourning. Why would God want me to mourn? But I tell you, if the state of your heart is bitter, if, you're, if the state of your heart does not line up with what God expects it to be, then you better weep, you better mourn, you better hold, you better lament and go before God and allow him to clean you up. Put away that laughter. If it comes from worldly lust and worldly desires, we ought to put it away. Because those who are friends with the world are enemies with God. Any friend of the world is an enemy to God. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. He shall lift you up. And let me just highlight the classic example here of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 2, the classic example of humility and submission. Reading from verse 5, it says, let this mind be in you. Which, has also, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Jesus was royalty. Royalty, he was God, seated on the throne. He was God, but he left that place and that position and he came to earth to dwell among men, to look like men. That's what he did. And I also drew the analogy this morning of being a soldier. As we are often called in Christendom, we are often called soldiers. And with the natural soldiers, when they move up rank and they get achievements, what do they have? They have badges and stripes. They, they become well decorated. And every time they put on their uniform, they have to walk with all of their accolades, with pride. With pride. That's how the natural soldier has to present himself. However, it is different with the Christian soldier. Yes, we are soldiers and we have to war and we have to fight. But you see all of our achievements, we got to just leave them behind. Just like the apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, I count everything, everything that I have achieved, I just counted it, count it as dung, as lost, as a waste just so that I can obtain Christ. You see, when you walk in pride and you walk with your head up and you have all of your accomplishments weighed down on your shoulders, that's as far as you get and as much attention as you get. That's as much as you get. You get nothing more. You accomplish nothing more. Paul said, I count it as dung, as dung, but I press forward and press toward that mark in the high calling of Christ. And likewise, that's what we ought to do. 
We ought to continue to press forward. And we ought to, as we press forward, we got to bring others into the fold. Those that are lost, those that are dying, those that are hurting, we got to bring them in. The Apostle Paul is another good example. He went all out. He experienced shipwrecks. He experienced almost losing his life, imprisonment. How many of you will lay down your life just like the Apostle Paul did? There's no more need. There's no more need for a sacrifice like what Jesus did. did. His sacrifice was once and for all. But how many of you would lay down your life like how the Apostle Paul laid down his life for another? How many of you will go the extra mile to see somebody one to the Lord? How many of you will humble yourselves and put away the pride, everything that you have accomplished and attained in life? You know who I am? Do you know my title? Do you expect me to present myself in such a manner? I can't be found doing such a thing. But the word of God says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. He didn't come with any reputations, nothing. He just put on the form of man and dwelt among men. And then this is what God did. We're still in Philippians chapter 2. It says, wherefore God also has highly exalted him. After he went all the way to his death, all the way to Calvary, that was total submission. He knew that God's plan was for him to come to this earth and lay down his life. How many of us, if we knew that God said, you have to die so that these people can live. How many of you will say, here I am, God. Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. But God, if not, if it has to happen, I'm yours. Do whatever you need to do. When Jesus fulfilled the plan of his father, when he fulfilled obedience, God exalted him. Not just exalted him, but he highly exalted him. And he gave him a name which was above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. Let him be your example in humility. If you want to attain and to achieve certain things, know that sometimes you have to go through the fire, but also know that when you go through the fire, it shall not burn. Neither shall the flames kindle upon you. Know that you have to go through the waters, but when you pass through the waters, they will not overflow you. Know that sometimes you will be walking through the valley of the shadow of death, but you know that God is with you, never leaving you nor forsaking you. Know that he is providing a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Just get up and be and do what God has called you to be. And what he has called you to do. In Psalm 75 verse 6 and 7. It reminds us that promotion does not come from the east. Nor the west. Nor even from the south. But it is God. He is the one that judges. And he is the one that promotes. He is the one that takes down. Demotes. Whether it may be as a result of pride. He takes down one and sets up another. You're looking for promotion in your job? Then do not put yourself out there in a prideful manner or arrogant manner. Just humble yourself. Just lay low. Lay low and trust God 
and see what he will do. This is a sure way we can put ourselves in line for divine favor. We can guarantee it if we do what God's word says. Remember, if God said it, then we can expect to see it as we fulfill the requirements. I must include that part. If God has said it, then we should expect to see it as we fulfill the requirements on our end. We should expect to see the prize of favor when we walk in humility. Remember, God resists the proud, but he gives grace or favor to the humble. We should expect to see the enemy fleeing from us when we submit to God and resist the devil because that's what God says in his word. We should expect God to draw near to us when we draw near to him. He guarantees us that he'll draw near to us, but how? We have to draw near to him. We can expect that we'll be exalted, but after we walk in humility, after we walk in humility, and for those who may be hearing me this morning and you desire, you have a desire to have some of the things that I've mentioned here this morning, but you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Let me tell you, that's one of the requirements that's necessary to receiving these promises that are given to us. So if you don't know the Lord as Savior, I want to encourage you to accept him, to live for him, to believe in him. Because of sure, or for sure, when we close our eyes in death, or if the Lord should come before we die, there is only one place we will go. That is either to heaven, to, to have a heavenly experience with him, or a hellish experience. You choose where you want to go. Many believe there is no hell and you believe there is no hell because the devil himself wants you to believe there is no hell. Do not let him succeed today. Let's stand. Let's stand. Maybe you have been running the race, but you have not been running it well. You've been missing the mark. You've been falling and tripping, not meeting the requirements that are necessary. If that's you, I just want to encourage you to talk to God for a moment or two. Tell him where you're messing up and ask him where you need strength and help. Because we need to endure. We need to endure. We are closer now to the end than we have been 20 years ago, 100 years ago. We're closer now today than we were yesterday. And of a sure, the end will come. It will come. It will come. So for those who don't know the Lord as Savior, just repeat after me. Say, Father, I come before you. I recognize that I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that Jesus died and he rose again and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. I welcome him into my heart to be Lord of my life. I ask, oh God, that you write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I understand, dear God, that as I begin this journey with Christ, it will not be all roses. But Lord, I pray that you would strengthen me. I pray that you would hold my hand and see me through. May I run this race with endurance so that I will receive the crown of life. And Father, this morning, O oh God, everyone, O oh God, who is hearing my voice, O oh God, those who, Lord God, have been walking with you, Lord, where we have messed up, where we have missed the mark, oh God, I ask that you forgive us, oh God, and I ask that you strengthen us, oh Lord. I ask, oh God, that you change our hearts, that you transform us, oh God, 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, may we submit ourselves to you, O oh God. Lord, may you teach us, Lord God, your ways. And Lord God, may we hold fast in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for this opportunity, O oh God. Lord, to be in your presence. We thank you, O oh God, for everything that was said and done, O oh God, in the sanctuary, O oh Lord. Continue to keep us, O oh God, in your able hands, O oh God. Exalt us, O oh God, in our due season. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for the angels that will watch over us as we leave this place. In the name of Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen and amen. The simplicity of the gospel.